Welcome to Electro Online. In this video, we're going to explore what the inverse of a hyperbolic function is. And quite often, we think it's similar to the hyperbolic trigonometric functions, but there is definitely a big difference between them. It's similar in the, in the following way. Let's say that we define the sine of an angle to be equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse on a triangle. Now, the opposite side would be equal to the y, and the hypotenuse on the unit circle would be equal to 1, so it's basically y is equal to the sine of the angle. And so the inverse can be then defined as the angle is equal to the inverse sine of the opposite over the hypotenuse. That would be equal to the inverse sine of the opposite side, which is y, and the hypotenuse, of course, which is 1 on the unit circle. So therefore, we can say that theta is equal to the inverse sine of y. So basically we're interchanging the angle and what the sine of that angle is equal to. We simply interchange the two variables and we call that the inverse sine. Well, in that respect it's the same for hyperbolic functions. Now let's say we want to find the, the inverse hyperbolic sine of x. So we're going to define x to be equal to the hyperbolic sine of y, then of course, just like we did before, we reverse the variables, and so y is equal to the inverse hyperbolic sine of x. But in this case, it's a little bit different because we're not dealing with an angle, we're not dealing with the triangle on the unit circle. Here we define the hyperbolic sine of y as being equal to e to the y minus e to the negative y divided by 2. And so x now becomes equal to that. To find the inverse, what we're going to do is we're going to exchange the x and the y in the equation and then solve for y. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to take this, we bring the 2 over here, so we end up with 2x is equal to e to the y minus e to the negative y. And so now it'll be, the exercise will be trying to find y because when we find y, we know that that's going to be equal to the inverse hyperbolic sine of x. Now to do that, what you need to do is use a little trick. Since we see an e to the y and an e to the negative y, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the left side and the right side by e to the y to simplify the equation and allow us to be able to solve it. So on the right side, we end up with a 2x e to the y is equal to, we multiply this here, we get e to the 2y minus e to the negative y times e to the y is simply equal to 1. And now notice we actually have a quadratic equation of the variable e to the y. So what we're going to do is move everything over to one side. So when we do that, we get 0 is equal to e to the 2y. Move this across, it becomes minus 2x e to the y and minus 1. So sure enough, that's a quadratic equation of e to the y. And to solve that, we use a quadratic formula. So we can say that e to the y is equal to the negative of the middle term, which is a positive 2x, plus or minus the square root of this squared, which is 4x squared, minus 4 times the coefficient of the first term, which is 1, times the coefficient of the last term, which is the negative 1. And the whole thing will be divided by twice the coefficient of the first term, 2 times 1. So then, let's see, let's come over here. So now we realize that this becomes e to the y is equal to 2x plus or minus the square root of, we have 4x squared and minus 4 times a minus 1 that becomes a plus 4 all divided by 2. And then we realize we can factor out a 4. So this becomes e to the y is equal to 2x plus or minus 2 times the square root of x squared plus 1, all divided by 2. And now we can divide the 2 into the two terms in the numerator. So e to the y now becomes equal to 1x plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 1. And now we can take the natural log of both sides. So when we take the natural log of the left side, e to the y, that simply becomes y. And then we also take the natural log of the right side, the natural log of x plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 1. And so here, when we do that, we get y is equal to the natural log of 
Now think about the plus and the minus. Are both answers possible? And the answer is no, because the square root of x squared plus 1 is always going to be bigger than x. And if we subtract that from x, we get a negative number, and a negative number is not possible. So we could put the absolute value signs around it, or simply remove the absolute value signs and remove the negative. And so then we could simply say that's equal to the natural log of x plus the square root of x plus 1. Now, we go back and we realize, well, y was equal to the hyperbolic or the, the inverse hyperbolic sine of x. And since y is equal to that, that means this is equal to the inverse hyperbolic sine of x. So therefore, we can say that the inverse hyperbolic sine of x is therefore equal to the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. And there is then our answer for how do we find the, the inverse hyperbolic sine of x? And that is how we do it, and this is therefore the result. So you can see that it's not similar to what we saw with trigonometric functions. It's very different since the hyperbolic functions are defined by using these exponentials. But you can see that using a similar approach, we do find the inverse of the hyperbolic functions using a little trick and a little bit of algebra, and there you go. So we'll show you how to find the hyperbolic functions of the other, uh, I should say the inverses of the other hyperbolic functions in, in the future videos, but at least now you get the concept of what the inverse of hyperbolic function is. You may wonder, well, why do we need them? Well, stay tuned. We'll show you that they can actually be very useful, especially when it comes to doing certain integrals. So stay tuned, and we'll have more for you on inverses of, of hyperbolic functions.